Hey everyone, what's happening? I just thought I would share my thoughts about what happened at the E3 conference last week. For those who don't know, E3 stands for Electronic Entertainment Expo. This is an annual convention that takes place in Los Angeles uh, where different video game developers get together to discuss video games that are in production. Uh, I'm a huge Elder Scrolls fan, so and I'm very hyped about Elder Scrolls 6, which is in pre-production right now, so I was hoping for some news about it, so I've kind of been following what's going on. And by the way, any Elder Scrolls fans that follow my channel, what do you all think about Jeremy Soule, who was the composer for the last three Elder Scrolls games? Fantastic composer. I mean, I cannot imagine an Elder Scrolls game without his music. And he made a post on his Facebook page uh, back in January that so far Bethesda has not contacted him to compose the soundtrack for Elder Scrolls VI. And I'm like devastated. And I just, I'm, I'm actually, like, I, I, I'm the biggest fan in the world. I mean, Elder Scrolls, I've been playing since 2003 when Morrowind came out. And I'm still playing Morrowind, favorite game ever. And uh, But I just can't imagine an Elder Scrolls universe without his music. And I'm honestly thinking that if he's not involved with this game, I'm not even going to bother buying it. But anyway, getting back on track. What happened last week is that this actor named John Bernthal, I've never heard of him, but he's a huge, huge Pitbull advocate. Uh, he showed up on stage at the Ubisoft press conference... Well, I'll just let you watch what happened. What's going on, everybody? Hey, I'm John. Good to be here. This is Bam Bam the Dog. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's a real honor to be here with you guys today. Thank you. I love you too. Right on. This is awesome. This is awesome, he says. Awesome for who? Awesome for you, Mr. Pitbull Advocate, who's hell-bent on changing public perception of pitbulls, spreading your propaganda like a missionary going around into places that... I mean, th this dog did not need to be on stage. Its appearance was not explained. It, it's like these people are bringing their dogs absolutely everywhere. And this is very, very selfish. They have a very selfish agenda. They want to change the public perception. They want people to come around and see how loving and sweet and whatever these dogs are, right? That's their goal. Selfish, purely selfish and inconsiderate. As I've stated in a previous video, one in 20 people suffer from a crippling fear of dogs called sinophobia. One in 20, that's, that's a crippling fear. That's not even taking into consideration the many, 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 many people like myself who do not suffer a crippling fear, but are justifiably uneasy around dogs because as I have explained, dogs are natural predators they are descended from wolves, and as such, they all display predatory aggression. They are all unpredictable. But pit bulls especially, bully breeds especially, were bred to be efficient killers. They were bred to attack without showing any warning signs like other dogs. They are known for being the sweetest dogs for years and years, and then suddenly snapping and going on a rampage and killing people and tearing people's faces off unprovoked for no reason. Because, well, the reason is it's predatory aggression. They see something, uh, something that moves suddenly, makes a sudden noise, and their tiny pea brains interpret that as prey, and they are set off, and they go into this frenzy of attacking and and they want to kill and they shake and they clamp down with their teeth and they don't let go unlike other breeds there are so many reasons to be justifiably uncomfortable around these dogs this dog wasn't even leashed so we're talking one in 20 with a crippling fear i don't know what the stats are for people like me who are just 
justifiably uncomfortable around these unpredictable predators, fanged predators. Um, but there are a lot of us. And then you have the actual dog lovers who love dogs, but still hate bully breeds because they know the facts about these dogs and they know what they were bred for and they know what they are capable of. Sudden, unprovoked, explosive aggression. And, and you know, bully breeds may account for up to three quarters of all dog bite fatalities. And these people are so selfish and so inconsiderate to bring a dog like this on a stage where it has absolutely no business. It has no reason to be there at all. People are talking about it being his companion animal, emotional support dog. I don't think so. I think this guy is just a pit bull nutter advocate who wants to spread his message like any religious zealot wants to convert people to his religion, dog cultist. This is a prime example of, it's the same religious fervor, like they want to spread their message with no consideration for the, for the other people. Not a thought was given to all the people in that audience that may have been bitten by a pit bull, may have been mauled, may have had loved ones mauled or disfigured by pit bulls, are rightfully afraid of these beasts. No consideration given to them whatsoever. And then all of the dog lovers who have had their pets shredded up, killed by these bully breeds. No consideration for them whatsoever, you know? And let's say it was a emotional support dog. So many people are bringing their emotional support dogs everywhere. If you're in such an emotionally fragile state that you need to bring a shitting teddy bear with you everywhere and pretend that it loves you, when it doesn't, it's just purely food driven and looks at you and follows you around and snuggles up to you and licks you because you are its food dispenser. But if you want to pretend that that's love and you got to bring this beast with you everywhere because it somehow calms your nerves or whatever because you're in such a fragile emotional state, you need to stay at home. You need to stay at home and do what people did when I was growing up. Get your friends and your family members to go to the store for you and run your errands. Because bringing an animal like this around, it's not even like any dog, any dog, because all dogs are unhygienic, virtually all dogs are infested with worms and shed uh, parasitic worm eggs, which survive in the environment for years and can only be destroyed with fucking blow torches. You need to keep your disgusting animal at home and quit forcing your disgusting lifestyle on the rest of us. Um, stay home. Why is your mental health more important than the mental health of all of those people who are anxious and uncomfortable around your beast? Why is consideration given to the minority of people who require these walking, shitting teddy bears uh, who do not love you back? That's delusional. Dogs do not love you. I made a video about this. Uh, why is their mental health, why are their needs um, prioritized over the needs and the mental health and well-being of all of the people in this world who are uncomfortable around dogs and there are many of them and do you know why they are afraid to speak up because they know that if they do they are going to face the backlash of these pit nutters who then attack us they they go darvo on our asses and if you don't know what darvo means check out my video about how to stay sane in a dog crazy world sorry it's actually in my video about core beliefs Darvo stands for deny, attack, and reverse victim and offender. These people are offensive, bringing their dogs everywhere. Especially unleashed. This dog was fucking unleashed on the stage. Anyhow, this is offensive. And even when the dogs do something awful, like attack and kill someone's pet, or not even kill, just attack, attack a child or anyone, when they are called out, when people speak out about it, 
they are always made into the offender and the victim, uh, it's reversed. The dog becomes the victim and the actual victim or those whistleblowers who are speaking the truth and sharing the facts about dogs are vilified and made into the offenders. This is complete insanity. These people are nuts. And I don't know if they make up the majority or if they are just a very loud minority. It seems like they do make up the majority, which fills me with, um, with a, a nauseating feeling of dread, terror, that I, I share the world with these people who are brainless zombies that seem to be infected with some sort of pathogen that is preventing them from thinking clearly and seeing reality and seeing the evidence that is right in front of them. People don't seem to understand the meaning of unpredictable. I keep having people arguing with me, will not all dogs attack? No, they don't all bite and not all drunk drivers crash. But drunk driving is criminalized for a reason. It's because it increases risk of injury and death. Having an unpredictable dog, and for those who don't understand what un unpredictable means, because apparently this is a lot of you, unpredictable means you can never know if your dog is suddenly going to snap. And your personal anecdotal evidence, I don't care how many pit bulls you have known personally that were sweet, loving dogs. The same can be said of countless other people who have had the sweetest, most loving family pit bulls, raised in loving homes, well-trained, blah, 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 that were the best dogs with their kids, that suddenly, for some reason that they can't explain, latched onto their child's face and permanently disfigured their child, if not killed their child. This happens regularly, and they can't explain it themselves. I talked about this in my last video. Um, in many of my videos, actually, and still, like, these people don't understand. It's, it's so frustrating. All dogs are unpredictable. It does not matter how they were raised. It is not the owner. It doesn't matter. You could be the most responsible owner in the world. Your dog could be the best behaved, most well-trained, sweetest dog in the world. It is an animal. It is not a human. And because it is an animal, with predatory aggression, which all dogs possess, some dogs have it more than others, bully breeds have it more than others, they are ticking time bombs. It is playing Russian roulette. Your dog never attacked you? That's great. You were lucky. That's all it means. It means you were lucky. I have to say, I wonder, after reading this article about how fans accuse Bethesda of faking crowd reactions during their E3 presentation, like people are saying that there was excessive noise from the crowd and that people are accusing, um, accusing them of planting a fake crowd or pick them out to sit under mics or something and to fake these cheering noises like i, I don't know it's possible it, and it really makes me wonder if the reactions that you see in the video of this john bernthal douche coming out with his dog uh, you know people look excited and happy and all of the comments that i read under the youtube video and on, under other articles about about it makes me question if people are not being paid to have these reactions because i can't believe that people are people really this stupid how can people deny evidence like this it blows my mind and it makes me wonder like i know i made a video a lot of people accuse me of being crazy and having like these conspiracy thoughts and whatever but, you know, about the parasites, is it something in the water? I don't know what it is, but these people are not thinking clearly. They can't see what's right in front of their faces. You put up all this evidence in front of them and they still deny it. And I sit there and I scratch my head and I wonder, what is wrong with you? In other ways, you seem to be quite intelligent. Uh, but what is it about pit bulls specifically that make people go cuckoo? They're nuts. They're crazy. They're in denial. And 
it's not only endangering them, they are endangering everyone in society. I honestly spent some time last night just looking at pro pitbull videos online and uh, just reading the comments and all of the millions of people that are just enamored with these dogs, swooning over them, completely crazy over them. What is it? This is the most ugly animal in the universe. What do you see in it? Not only is it ugly, it is an efficient killer. It was bred to be an efficient killer, disgusting animal that is mauling our children every day. What kind of person finds anything endearing in a creature like that? You're sick. There are experts, doctors, plastic surgeons warning us to keep these dogs away from people, from children especially. And still people are promoting them as good family dogs. What is wrong with you? It's just incredible to me. And you know, John Bernthal, you have blood on your hands. Every single pit bull advocate has blood on their hands because of people like you putting out this message that these are good dogs, great to have around kids, great to have in our communities. It's because of you that these dogs are mauling and disfiguring people every day, mostly children. How can we not hate you? How can we not look at you with disgust and contempt? I try not to, honestly, because I know some people personally who, if it weren't for the pit bull thing, if it weren't for them promoting pit bulls and owning pit bulls, I would like them. They seem like great people. I cannot look at them without seeing irresponsible people with blood on their hands. Shame on you. Wake up. And just one last thing I want to say about John Bernthal, who uses his platform to advocate for pit bulls. Uh, I just read that he has three rescue pit bulls. I want to touch upon this whole rescue thing. It was brought to my attention. I never thought about it before, but it's absolutely true that the language that we are using shapes the way we think. And we need to stop using the words adopt and rescue. First of all, adoption refers to humans. You adopt a child. When we start using the word adoption in reference to dogs, we are putting dogs on the same level as children. We need to stop doing this immediately and call others out when they do it. You do not adopt a dog. You buy a dog. You own a dog. All right. And Another thing, rescue, you are not rescuing a dog. If you cared about dogs, about animals, if you, you know, really cared about saving them from death, you would wash your hands of the entire pet industry. Because if you buy a dog from a shelter or a rescue organization, they're only going to replace it with a hundred more. And you are just keeping the ball rolling. You are perpetuating this system wherein dogs are suffering and dying daily in huge numbers. You would wash your hands of the entire thing because by becoming a pet owner, no, you're not a pet parent, even if you might call yourself that, you're not. You're not a guardian or whatever the hell you call yourself. You are a pet owner. When you become a pet owner, you are putting out the message to the public that being a pet owner is a great thing. And you're encouraging them to go out and do the same thing you did. Purchase a dog. Bring it home. What's happening? Why is there such a huge turnover rate? Why are all the shelters filled to the brim, bursting at the seams with unwanted dogs? Because dogs are a pain in the ass. People get dogs. They bring them home. They discover they're too much work. They're too annoying. They don't like them. They bark too much. They show aggression towards their kids. Fuck this. They bring the dog back to the shelter because the lies that you are spreading are making people go out there thinking dogs are great to have around. They're not. And then the people's reality sinks in once they get the stupid animal in their house. 
and then they bring them back and the whole thing just keeps on turning like a giant wheel. If you care about dogs, you would want to see an end to the suffering because they are suffering. Put an end to it. Stop putting out the message that it's great to be a pet owner. And the only way you can do that is by not being a pet owner. Forget about this whole rescue bullshit. You're not rescuing a dog. You're going out there and you're paying money for a cute little fur ball because you're selfish, because you want to have this feeling like you're a virtuous person doing this great, noble thing. Bullshit. Go help a human being if you want to be a virtuous, noble person. All right? Help a human being. D donate to some kind of human charity that helps children, that helps humans. Because it's human beings that are going to uphold our civilization, not friggin' dogs. So you can still be a good person by helping humans. And if you truly want to see an end to uh, dog suffering, like I said, don't be a pet owner. Don't promote dog ownership. I don't care what you call it. And, and you can't promote... You cannot be against pet ownership while you own a dog that's like sitting in a cloud of your own marijuana smoke telling people not to do drugs, all right? Wash your hands of this addiction you have to pets because that's all it is. You're addicted to dogs. You like the feeling they give you when they lick you and wag their tails. You like to pretend it's love. Get over yourself. Get real. Watch my videos. Learn how they do not love you. You are delusional. Wake up and get real. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video. Spread the word. Open people's eyes. Like I said, if you're not putting out the word, you're not opening eyes, you have blood on your hands. If you're just silent and you don't say anything when these idiots go on stages with their dogs, you don't speak out when people promote them as safe, good family dogs, you have blood on your hands too. So let's fight this and put an end to this insanity. The future is dog-free.